So madethebest.com sent me a laser engraver? Yeah, so uh, madethebest.com reached out to me and they were like, hey, we see you make stuff in your channel and we have this really cool Ortor, 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 Ortor Laser Master 2 that uh, we'd be interested in sending you to do a little review and build and, you know, just have. So um, I obviously said yes because uh, these are kind of cool and I've always kind of wanted a laser engraver. Uh, and cutter that's what's cool about this this is the 20 watt version so I, I think it's a it's like a 7 15 and a 20 or something along those lines they have a couple different options and uh, they sent me the 20 watt and it can engrave and cut so I was really excited to get this thing as you can see it's already built because I may have lost the footage to the actual build I just recently had a, um, a, a snafu with an SD card lost some footage I'm upset. This is also take two of this video because the first time my audio for some reason didn't sync up. So I did the entire thing, uploaded the video to, to the computer and there was no audio. So now we're here. But the assembly is pretty simple. I'm gonna take you guys first around the frame and kind of highlight just the construction of it. The instructions online are very easy to follow. They give you a QR code and a little PDF you can download, you can throw it on your phone, an iPad. I had it on the computer while I was building it over here like a week ago. And uh, yeah, pretty pretty simple. Really pay attention to some of the pictures, the way some of the, the T slots kind of lock in there, pretty easy. What's really cool about this type of system, it's like a vinyl cutter, like a silhouette cameo or something along those lines or a Cricut meets a 3D printer. It's got aluminum extrusion, stepper motors, belts. It's basically a 3D printer, except instead of adding things, it's lasering them because it's a laser, cuts things. Then I'm gonna go over the software and kind of just how it operates. It does come with its own software you can use from uh, Ortur. I, I'm gonna say that wrong the entire time, so deal with it. Um, but everybody kept re recommending a program called Lightburn, so I downloaded that. It was like 40 bucks, but it's very intuitive and super easy to use, especially if you've ever used any type of, again, vinyl cutting software or sticker making programs. It's, it's very simple, and I was able to get some really cool stuff out almost immediately. And finally, we're gonna talk a little bit about sa laser safety and just shop safety, being around something like this. Now, 3D printers are one thing. Yeah, they can get hot. Maybe if you're using something old like a, um, a really old original 3D printer, maybe they can catch fire. Lasers are a lot more dangerous. They can cause a lot of damage. Uh, they can hurt you, they can blind you. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that too, so. So the design and construction of this thing is pretty straightforward and simple. It's a square frame with some belts and it moves the laser around in an XYZ coordinate system. When you're really looking at it, it is more bare bones than uh, I had imagined and you can get enclosures and upgrades for it, which is pretty neat. Now, let me first off start by saying that having it in this room like this is very dangerous. Do what I say, not as I do. This is only for the video. I did a little bit of testing. I have a fire extinguisher ready. There's a lot that went into this and just don't mimic this and have it just sitting in the middle of your room like this without any precautions. It has a very simple control board here. Um, I believe this is for an expansion slot, a power, and it plugs into your computer. Now, having it plugged into a computer obviously limits where you can put it. If you don't have a computer in your garage, for, uh, for example, you're gonna need to be limited on where exactly you can have this. I do plan to set this up in my garage within the closure and all that fun stuff, but this is the only way I can get it to operate right now. Um, as far as my knowledge goes, I don't think there's any type of SD expansion you can put on this to make like a USB. Maybe there is, I gotta look more into it. If you're familiar with 3D printers, cause you're on my channel, uh, you have a stepper motor here and you have a stepper motor here. That's really the entire system. The belts don't move like on a 3D printer. The belts are locked in here. And what I did is I tensioned them a little bit more. As you go and build this, you'll have to thread the belts through and tighten them in. These are the little uh, extrusion screws I was talking about or the uh, little slider brackets. Everything just butts up in a nice square frame. It's very simple. And then the stepper motors spin and pull the belt above the, uh, the little gear, which is pretty cool. It's a neat little system, how it moves. That does that and it operates the same way here. The laser just connects to there. It, it goes together in about 30 minutes. Um, and I don't know, I think somebody, I think, I think someone like eight or nine years older could you know, build this thing pretty simply um, with parental supervision. If you don't wanna give an eight year old a laser, I can't imagine what would go wrong with that. Uh, it has a little limiter switch, just like a 3D printer. And then it has a little limiter button here. I guess they just didn't want to 
use a limiter switch. It was weird. Um, they give you some good cable management options. I made mine all pretty and clean. And they give you some cool balsa wood to test with. Hi, Maya. Uh, yeah, I was already practicing with logos and testing some stuff out. It's pretty neat. I like it. Look at that. They give you some glasses, and we're gonna talk about these a little bit later. A bunch of certificates for authenticity, and you know, it, it's a laser product. And again, you can do damage. I did mock up a little bit of a uh, frame here, and I'll talk about why there's a square here and what I did for alignment. Yeah, I, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of figuring that out. I'm sure there's another way to do it or an easier way to figure it out, but yeah, it goes together pretty simple. Doesn't take up much room. It's incredibly light because it's aluminum. So you can really, you can, I could pack this up and just leave it in the closet if I wanted to. So this is the program called Lightburn, and I believe their other program operates and looks something very similar to this. There was like a 30 day trial for it, but I know I'm gonna be using this a lot. So I sprung for, the, sprung for it. And it's, again, it's pretty simple to use. Um, you can, when you add your device, there's a good list to search from. Uh, there is a manual when you download all the data from the website, you can search. They give you the software installation for Lightburn. It, it's very, it, it's a very nice little package. And uh, again, it was very super simple to set up. Um, and there's a bunch of controls. You have your cuts, you have everything that's been done. You can adjust your speed, your power, everything over here. You can start, you can stop it at absolutely any time. You can move. I have a couple, I have one different setting in here. Uh, and just when I want to go to center, I can make the printer or cutter go directly to dead center. It's a 200, it's a 400 by 430 bed, I believe. And finding the dead center is why I have this square here. So I use this as a reference. I made a little square. You can make however many shapes you want, do whatever. And by selecting the object, you can go into the corner and you can, you can center its position. So this is dead center directly in the middle. And then I let it go and do the cut. Now, once the cut was done on the cardboard, it gave me a perfect little square. Now, if I want to go and take this logo, you drop whatever picture you want in, depending on the clarity of it, you can right click trace and you can move the threshold. Now the threshold is gonna pick up the tolerances of the color. So there's no eyes, now there's eyes. Cool, do that. Now I have a trace pattern. And then I can take this, I can resize it. I can go up here and rotate it 90 degrees. I can sit here. And now this square I can fit it in there. It was a remote. I engraved the back of a remote, cut up, did the math, figured out how much of the, how big the square was. And then I engraved this logo on the back of it. Cause you know, why not? I have a laser engraver now. I can do what I want. So now I know exactly where this is going to engrave relative to the little remote. And then you can either let it cut the square. And again, I believe there's a way to make it not cut shapes. And I got to figure out the program more. Um, I'm not exactly positive how to do it but just as a reference, or you can just take it, drop that there, and then I know again, it's still gonna be on that square that's cut on my mat. Now there's probably a whole other complicated way to do this or not so complicated way or whatever, uh, but as I get the laser engraver set up more and more permanent with an enclosure and an actual grid, I won't really have this problem anymore. You can add text, you can type, you can make shapes, you can import a multitude of different images. Uh, it, it's it's a pretty pretty simple to do. Now I'm just engraving right now. Obviously this thing can't cut and I'm gonna need to play around with the speeds and the passes and the power settings. So there's a lot more to learn there and I'm excited to do it. Now I'm gonna let this go and cut on the cardboard. Again, don't do this inside, please, but it's pretty cool to watch. Now, obviously my board moved. I guess while I was doing the little demonstration, I had uh, you know, shifted this. But originally when I cut this square, this would have been centered in there. Stuff happens, I'm not too worried about it. But it's really cool to watch and testing this on cardboard seems to be working out pretty nicely. It is leaving a nice mark. That was only one pass. I believe this was like two, but it gets the job done. And again, it's, it's, it's really fun to watch with the proper safety uh, constraints in place, like your glasses. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is safety. Uh, I did a lot of research before this on just laser safety. Now I'm no stranger to machinery that can injure and or kill you. I work on jet engines and all that fun stuff. I've been uh, a mechanic all my life. Things that are dangerous are don't scare me in that sense, but because I respect them, you need to always stay on your toes. 
Uh, I've worked around lathes and CNCs. Those are terrifying. Now, the, probably the biggest thing with these is some type of laser safety glasses. Now, these look okay. However, I went and ordered an actual legitimate pair that are rated and safe for uh, laser engraving and cutting because sometimes, now I'm not saying this brand in particular, I've never messed with them or anything, um, there have been reports of knockoff goggles and glasses that aren't rated properly for the laser that you're using. So you want to be safe and make sure you have the proper eye protection because this can really do some damage to you. The other thing is it's cutting. It can cause smoke. It can cause fire. The best advice I saw online about uh, setting up where you put a laser engraver is don't put it on something you're not willing to burn or lose. I wouldn't have this in here constantly operating. I'm gonna have it in the garage. I'm gonna have it in an enclosure. I'm gonna have it on a nice metal table and I'm gonna be careful with it. Never leave it running by with, with uh, nobody in the room. Don't, oh, this 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 cut's gonna take two hours. Eh, well, let me, let, me, let me go get something to eat. Stay in the room, stay attentive to it. Unless, you know, that's a risk you guys wanna take. That's totally up to you. I very much wouldn't recommend it. Always be safe. This isn't like a 3D printer you can leave for days on end and have just a couple safety features in the way. This. Theoretically, as far as I know, this won't know if a fire starts. There's no thermal runaway system that'll know if this bed right here catches on fire. Now, maybe there is, maybe I have to look a little bit more into it. That would be really cool. And if, so, if I'm wrong about that, please leave a comment down below. Um, but I still wouldn't want to risk something like that and risk losing something because I just got a little uh, you know, bored or impatient and just wanted to leave. So please be careful with that. And it's giving off fumes. It's burning stuff. It's melting stuff cardboard, paper, plastic. There's a lot of a lot of different things react weird when you hit them with this high of a temperature. You never know the fumes that are coming out of it. So again, be careful. Ventilated area. If you have it it's somewhere in a workshop or somewhere in your home, maybe have a light, some type of safety system, a sign you hang out on, on the outside of the door so people in your household or wherever it is know there's a laser in use. Don't just walk in and start staring at it. So I just really want you guys to be safe about this. This is this could be a very dangerous machine. But all things considered, I had it directly out of box. I was immediately engraving and cutting things and you know, it's totally fine. Gives you a little balsa wood things to play with and test on. And I'm gonna pick up more of this, more little pieces of wood, more things to practice on. I'm gonna do the research. I'm, there's tons of forums and media out there about what materials, what types of uh, strength laser versus what material you're cutting versus how many passes you have to do. So this is gonna be really fun to uh, grow and experiment with. And it's, uh, it's it unlocks a few cool new builds and ideas I have for the channel. There was nothing about this that would turn me off to telling you guys not to get it. It was very simple to set up. It doesn't have a large footprint. It isn't that complicated and you can engrave and cut a lot of cool stuff with it. The retail on this one's about $300. You can get the lower wattage ones for more just engraving purposes. There's a couple different sizes you can look at. I'll leave a link for this one specifically down below and then you can from there, um, explore the website and check all that stuff out. Now, when I get something new like this, I do always try to remember that I might be more mechanically inclined to build and operate something like this. It's it's my forte. I like stuff like this. And I always try to consider that somebody else may not. However, in that regard, I still think most people would be totally fine buying this, building it, setting up the program and engraving and cutting same day. It's pretty simple. Once I get more comfortable with the machine, once I've had it for a few weeks or months and I'm really doing some cool projects with it, I'll probably make a follow-up video just more about laser engraving and cutting once I understand the whole hobby a little bit more. So please stay tuned for that. Um, if you haven't already, if you could subscribe, this way you don't miss that video whenever it comes out. Uh, it'd be really, really help the channel out. We have 3D printing, we have cosplay, we have all that fun stuff. And again, I want to apply this in ways that really benefit the channel. And it's a cool little tool to add to my arsenal. Thank you again, MadeTheBest.com for sending this to me. It was awesome that you reached out and I really hope uh, we can work together more in the future. Uh, this is, this. thank you, this was really cool. If you guys want more information in the meantime or you wanna to talk to me more about this, either leave a comment down below or go check out the Discord. There's a link for that down in the description. We just broke 3,000 members and there's tons of information there. And now maybe we can start to pull people who know more about laser engraving and cutting into the Discord who can you know educate me and help all of us learn together. Thank you again, Made the Best, really, for sending this. Thank you guys so much for watching, and you have a good day.